What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, your host. So macOS 15.1, the second beta has just been released and this is despite the fact that macOS 15.0 hasn't yet been released. But in this video, I'm simply going to be showing you all the new features and changes that this software update has to offer. Going into the system settings right here, you can see we have a new software update. If we click there, you can see macOS Sequoia 15.1 beta 2. And if we click on the more info tab right here you can see this is just a beta and is meant to give a preview of mac os sequoia of the features that are going to be available in the fall and already before updating i can tell that apple has worked on a few of these release notes right here because before we used to get very vague and very limited language but you can see here at least they give you a few of the glimpse of the things that you can look forward to such as apple intelligence and and how you can be able to join the waiting list and be notified but this update of mac os sequoia 15.1 beta 2 comes in for me on my macbook pro at exactly 3.3 gigs and i was updating from mac os 15.1 beta 1. i'll quickly agree to the terms and conditions and then begin downloading the software over the air using my wi-fi connection and right here you can see that the download file size is exactly the same as the update file size at 3.3 gigs and I just want to show you that today Apple released a bunch of other updates right here in fact besides Mac OS Sequoia 15.1 there's seven other updates iOS 18.1 alongside iPad OS 18.1 beta 2 we have Mac OS 15.2 beta 2 of course this is the video for that and then now the iOS 18 in, uh, in sync with iOS 18.1 betas and that's the same with macOS 11.1 it's also in sync with macOS 15 betas so before these were a week apart but now they are being released at the same date and so these are now going to be running simultaneously and at the same time you can see some other updates that Apple released that I cover here such as tvOS 18 and watchOS 11 beta 6 alongside this vision OS update now if you want to keep up to date and know what's new within these updates definitely do hit that like and subscribe so that you stay up to date and get notified when these videos drop my device has now been updated to the latest Mac OS 15.1 build or update and one of the things I noticed when I was trying to update is that the large time sensitive almost widget like notification that appears when it's counting down has been reverted to its default old version unlike like before where you had an option to select useful and not and the buttons will be larger this time around it's back to its old version and it's now smaller where you now have the ability to say update now or not now and then it will give you the option to restart later going into the system settings right here to see some of the changes that have been introduced with mac os 15.1 is right here you can see the new build number that we have 24b5024e so now our update ends with an e and one of the things that annoys me with mac os especially not just this specific update is that when you open a new application or window in most cases it doesn't default to the center of the screen which is something that I've sent to Apple in the feedback assistant application to see if it, they can work on this because every time I want to open an application it's more convenient to have it front and center of the screen and of course since you've seen the build number you can now see some of the new features and changes that this update has to offer and one such change is this wallpaper that you can see right here so once you update this will automatically change your default wallpaper paper to this new Sequoia National Park and if you're using an external monitor like I am it's going to change the default wallpaper both for the MacBook and the extended display that you are using and also if we go into our system settings right here and go to where it says wallpaper right here you can see this macOS Sequoia now says sequoia it doesn't say beta like what it said before on mac os 15.1 the first beta and at the same time you can see here how this has also been updated to depict the sequoia sunrise and you have the ability to choose of course this landscape or you can also choose this default sequoia but for me 
in this section i'll select the landscape because this looks pretty good and there's something new that i want to show off i already did a video right here on the channel when apple intelligence first came out on mac os feel free to check it out i'll leave it in the description of this video but I basically showed off how you can change your Siri language to English US and change your um, system language to the English United States and that way you are able to get Apple intelligence but a lot of users in the EU or in Europe were unable to get Apple intelligence but after updating and after doing a little bit of research i noticed that for a few specific countries and a specific users in some regions were able to get apple intelligence so if you weren't able to get it on mac os 15.1 the first beta because if you're on mac os 15.0 beta 6 you won't see apple intelligence since it was introduced on mac os 15.1 so once you update to mac os 15.1 beta 2 there is a possibility that in some countries and regions and if yours is such a country you might be able to use and interact with apple intelligence and the newly updated siri on mac os 15.1 if you go into your settings as well after updating to this new firmware and you go to your appearance you'll be able to see that these window sections that have been updated now depict mac os sequoia instead of mac os sonoma but one thing that hasn't yet been updated if you're trying to add drop a file from one of your devices to a mac that's on mac os 15.1 beta 2 it doesn't yet depict the mac os sequoia wallpaper it still defaults to mac os sonoma so hopefully they are able to resolve that soon apple intelligence writing tools that are here with mac os 15.1 seems slightly improved as well it's now less glitchy and at the same time the response time seems to have been improved slightly compared to what it used to be on the previous update I don't know if this is just me or because I'm trying to trigger my mic and sound while I'm recording this video but Apple intelligence and Siri on my Mac every time I trigger doesn't make a sound like it does on my iPhone so I'm not sure whether that's a bug or an issue at this point in time now safari has also slightly been updated it seems to be refreshing much slower unlike before but just to show you the new build number that we have you can see the version is still safari 18.0 with the build 20619.1.2 26.11.3 and some of the updates that have been improved here have to do with distractions so if you click in this top section right here and then select the section that says high distracting items you can see high distracting items will not be permanently removed and ads and other content that update frequently so it won't be able to hide dynamic adverts so for example if i click ok right here and then you can see as i go on different different items right here on this Wall Street Journal website I can click on this and it has this pretty cool animation that hides it and you can see it's just gone but because this won't be able to track and hide dynamic ads or distracting items if a different advert or item comes in the same placeholder then it won't be able to hide that but it's a pretty cool animation if i wanted to hide this for example i can just press there and now you can see that has been hidden if i want to hide this olympics i can click there and now steph curry can be clutched without being seen on my screen right here which is something that's good and then once you are done you can see three items have been hidden and if you go on the top section it will tell you right here if you want to save you can click done if you want to cancel you can cancel right there and you can continue with your browsing right there and then you can see some of the ads or items we had hidden have now returned but instead of clicking cancel if we had clicked done then these hidden ads won't have been reverted back to their defaults and Steph Curry would still be hidden if you open up the music application some people are seeing a news plus screen I have not seen a news plus screen since I updated and when you open you see a pretty cool animation here I just thought it pretty much resembled this section of Sequoia but I think there's no resemblance there and at the same time you see that this browse section has been updated to or been rebranded to new so instead of saying browse it says new 
if you open up the podcast application after you update you'll be able to see a new plus screen that says what's new in podcast and it just talks about precise sharing where share a link to a specific time from the transcript is possible and if you click done right here you can see here the browse section hasn't been updated to or been renamed to new like the apple music but it has a new splash screen and i'm sure with time they will rename this just to make it more uniform around the os as this has been a custom of apple throughout the years in the apple music application just like the apple tv application and i believe the quicktime application as well when you go into settings right here and then you select playback you have the ability to use hdmi pass through and you can see you have the option to switch it off or prefer hdmi pass through which will allow you to play high beat rate lossless dolby atmos audio and this is something that's cool and it's now supported over hdmi which is something that's good something that's not good though is when you go to the widget section and you search for the music widget it hasn't yet been updated despite a lot of requests for it so do send your feedback or your concerns in the feedback assistant app and eventually that's something that we are going to see apple add when you go into your system settings and select the wi-fi network settings you have the ability to turn off private wi-fi address but when you turn it on you now have the ability to select fixed or rotating private wi-fi address which leads to more stable and secure connection as it changes your wi-fi address from time to time so this is just temporary the address that you see here and from time to time the network or the system will rotate it so that you are more secure and this is a pretty good update in terms of security on the developer page when you look for the release notes for mac os 15.1 beta 2 right here you can see that essentially the release notes that they are giving us is not mac os 15.1 beta 2 but it's that of mac os 15 beta 6 meaning that most of the new features and changes that mac os 15.1 beta 2 has and mac os 15 point or beta 6 or just mac os 15 beta 6 are more or less the same the only difference is that if you are trying to use apple intelligence you will need mac os 15.1 which mac os 15.0 doesn't have an interesting thing to point out when it comes to the build number of mac os 15 beta 6 right here you can see the build number is actually a higher build compared to mac os 15.1 beta 2 because it ends with an a unlike beta 2 of 15.1 that ends with an e so you are technically on a more stable build but if you want to try out apple intelligence then you of course need to update to mac os 15.1 as it's the one that has apple intelligence and of course you need to go into your software update page and you want to select where it says beta updates and choose mac os 15.1 instead of mac os 15 betas and that's when you'll be able to see mac os 15.1 updates now this is how this update came in for me on my macbook pro let me know what you think about this video if you found it helpful in a way leave a like so that others may be able to see it and subscribe so that you'll be able to see more videos on apple intelligence i'm planning to cover that soon and other OS releases that I'll be publishing pretty soon. So stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.